Yeah, yeah. MMA Profile fans, this is Nate with MMA Profile. I got a guy that you probably know who it is if you've been on the fight circuit within probably four or five hundred miles of Reno. It's the one, the only, Matt Tonkin. Hi guys. Well, <laughs> let's just jump in this, Matt. Now how did you guys, how did you get caught up in this whole uh, jujitsu fighting organization? How'd you come up with the name? Give me the whole scoop on the whole thing. The whole scoop, huh? Well, Tonkin fight team kind of happened on accident. Um, way back in the day, this is probably early 2000s, um, we were training at, at Charles Gracie Jiu Jitsu up on Stardust. And uh, Gary Great had a little hole in the wall gym. It was kind of downstairs. And uh, we weren't very technical, but literally we tried to murder each other all the time in there. Just you and, and Gary? There was quite a few of us. Um, and it's kind of cool, there's about, probably eight of us that started at white belt and got went all the way to black belt together it's kind of cool um they've kind of fractured off into different schools and stuff um just because they had a passion for teaching so i think they wanted to to have their own students and teach their own curriculums and stuff um, but i i've stayed with gary and charles from white belt all the way to second degree black belt um and then um yeah. i don't know if you're familiar with the lion's den yep. ken shamrock and uh -huh. the lion's den well Shamrock and Gracie was kind of like oil and water. They never really liked each other very much and because uh, of the early UFC days, of right. course. And uh, <clears throat> they, had, they started the IFL League. I don't know if you remember the International oh, yeah. Fight League where oh, they yeah. had the teams, and Ken Shamrock had the Lions. And so he would bring his fighters in um, to come train jiu-jitsu with us. And uh, there was like Buddy Roberts and Dan Molina and Vernon White and... Um, Patrick Dixon, Don Gunderson, Evan Dunham, oh yeah, um, all of those guys. So we used to all train together, and I would stay late, or I'd come in extra to help train with them. Um, and it was a lot of fun. We kind of built like a really cool bond. And Gary became the jujitsu coach for the IFL team, and he got to travel around with them and uh, help these guys with their jujitsu. And then uh, I kind of really bonded with a couple of those guys, like Buddy Roberts and, and Dan and. Pat Dixon and those guys, they were um, really became like family to me. And so I would spend a lot of time training with those guys. And uh, they asked me to corner for them, so I would, I would help corner them in fights. And that's kind of how it started. But where Tonkin Fight Team kind of evolved was we're a jiu-jitsu gym. And I mean, we have striking, we just don't have very, you know, there's better striking in Reno. And so I started this thing. I had a friend of mine that wanted to take a fight. and. We'd combine gyms with Nevada Muay Thai, and it was Casey Balkenbush at the time. And um, we were getting, we had Rick Reeves and Buddy and Zach Bunnell, and we were all training, trying to get ready for fights. Um, and we started incorporating like Nevada Muay Thai in to help us with our striking. Well, it kind of got a little weird because we couldn't really fight under the Gracie flag because now we had other gyms involved. and. Uh, once we started reaching out to other coaches, kind of the floodgates just kind of opened. We ended up Ryan Simpson from Reno City Boxing, and we had a lot of really good coaches really just wanting to volunteer their time um, to help these people fight. So it came out like, well, what are we going to call it? You know, we can't call it Gracie Muay Thai Reno City Boxing, like whatever. So I made this suggestion of Nevada MMA. Um, but he tried to start that a few years ago before he left. and. I thought Nevada MMA was kind of cool. And a friend of mine, Deacon, said, well, why don't we call it just Tonkin Fight Team? Because everybody seems to be ra rounding around you, circling the wagons around you, I guess. Um, and I was kind of, like, I'm not that vain. I'm, you know, I'm kind of running my mouth a little bit and talk a little shit here and there, but I'm really <laughs> not that vain. And I was like, well, you know, I'd rather a it little bit. be like Nevada Muay Thai. And we put it to vote and I lost. Um, I've tried to change the name twice since then, and I got outvoted twice, um, and Tonkin Fight Team started. And now, why are you at the Gracie Gym then? You just, uh, everyone kind of went their own ways, Nevada Kickboxing and these other organizations, you just kind of went to the Gracie Gym? 
Yeah, well, you know, I've stayed with, with Gary and, uh -huh. and Charles um, since I had my white belt. Um, like I said, I'm a second degree black belt now. Um, I do train at other gyms. I train, um, one of my best friends is Jerry Hallert and Byron Craig from the Kamano gym. Yep. Um, so I like to go over there and train. I kind of have this philosophy of, you know, to train with everybody. Um, I, I don't disagree with people that want to put a fence around their gym um, and just train with just their own people. But I believe that if we all just train together, we could all, we could all learn something new. We could take it back to our gym and we just made everybody just a little bit better. Yeah. Um, so I try to train with every black belt in town. Um, but some, you know, some schools don't like that and I respect that too. Yeah. You know, um, they want to keep everything in house and there's nothing wrong with that. Right. Because I think, I, I don't know, but it's probably because your fighters might fight their fighters or something, right? Yeah. Um, and I have mixed feelings on that. Um, you know, I don't like inner city rivalries. Um, I think it's good competition, sure. but a lot of times it, it spills over outside the cage. It spills over, they're walking out to the to their car after the movies with their girlfriend and we end up in a fist fight or they go down <laughs> to a bar and they end up in a fist fight at the bar or, right. you know, everybody, I'm not gonna say everybody, but most people think, you know, they train at the, at the best gym. Sure. You know, and that's that, that loyalty to their gym and that camaraderie that they built and they believe they have the best gym. Now, how did you come up with the logo with the uh, Mohawk? I didn't, um, Jerry Hallard. Um, the Kamanu gym also owns Kamanu Apparel and, uh, he, he helped make the logo for me. That's cool. Um, Memo is one of my best friends. He's, he's another just incredible human that donates all his time. I, you know, Tonkin Fight Team's free. We donate 100% of our time. Um, and it's kind of our way of giving back. You know, these kids and these gyms, I mean, it gets expensive. You know, paying gym memberships and travel and fighting. And, you know, you're fighting amateurs, so you're not making any money other than ticket sales. And it's just kind of our way of giving back. And uh, Memo's been on board with me the whole way. Um, he's one of my most loyal friends. He's always stuck by me. <laughs> so you told me you started with Gary. How did yeah. you get into jujitsu, and how did you meet Gary Great? Well, I used to wrestle Gary um, back in high school when I was a freshman. Um, Gary may look a lot older than me, but we're actually the same age. Um, so I, I've known him forever. Um, and like the late 90s, um, early 2000s you know we were <laughs> we were kind of training in a garage and we'd watch these fights um, and uh, and then we'd kind of emulate them in the garage and we'd call it jujitsu um, it was more like shit jitsu um, and then uh, I found I just dumb luck Gary had a sign up at, at Home Depot and I read the sign and called him because I knew him and uh, I went up to his gym at Stardust and started training up there with him so you were telling me that you had a, a fighter that was murdered and this almost ended your coaching uh, career. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, uh, his name was Ryan Jones. Um, he was sent to me by J.J. Milan. Um, he was a professional football player. He's a linebacker for the Baltimore Ravens and the New York Giants. And he broke his foot and he came back home and was training with J.J. over at Fast, uh, doing strength and conditioning to try to get back into the NFL and he found an interest in fighting. So JJ sent him to me. And at the time, my son Christian was a senior in high school. He played football at Galena and he was a middle linebacker. So I'm not a like rocket scientist or brain surgeon, but I thought, man, I have an NFL linebacker that wants to learn how to fight. Right. And my son's a linebacker. Why don't we trade this out? You teach my son how to play linebacker and I'll teach you what I know how to fight. So. The relationship was built after that and Ryan, we were literally together every day. Um, he was like family, like when I wasn't training him, he was training my son and you know, we, uh, we spent a lot of time together. I, I, I really genuinely loved that human. He was, he was a good, just a good person. Great big intimidating looking guy, but just had a great big heart. And uh, he fought a couple times. Uh, Fought a Muay Thai guy in Orville. Um, we went down there for that. And he ate a pretty bad leg kick. And he came back to the corner. He's like, man, I, I got to stay eating these leg kicks. And I'm like, well, check him. He goes, I'm trying to, man, but he's too fast. I said, well, take him down. He goes, my takedowns suck. I said, it's one-on-one -on -one tackling drills. Tell me you can't tackle this guy. 
So the next round, he went out there and just football tackled this guy and beat the hell out of him. <laughs> and then uh, he took another fight, and I think it was 11 seconds. Um, he ended up knocking out this poor kid in 11 seconds, broke his nose and crushed his orbital bone in 11 seconds. Oh, boy. Yeah. What was it, just a punch or an elbow? Or what? It was a punch. Um, hey, Ryan was, like I said, just this big, strong, freaky, athletic guy. Um, and like I said, my son was at Galena, um, and Ryan wasn't working at the time. So I talked to the coaches at Galena, and they hired him as the linebacker coach. Oh, yeah, so he of was course they be, would. Yeah, he's going to be yeah. Christian's linebacker coach. And then uh, Jerry and Byron had got him to test at Reno PD. So he just tested for Reno PD. Um, he, he got hired at Clover Community Counseling uh, with Deacon, and he was going to help at-risk foster kids um, try to turn their lives around and become better better kids yeah. between 15 and 18 years old and uh, uh, it was Father's Day and I had a private at the gym um, and it had canceled so every time I'd get a cancellation I would just call Ryan because he just wanted to train all the time so I called him I said hey Ryan my one o'clock canceled Do you want it he's like no nah, dog my my dad's in town and I'm trying to make amends with him um, we're gonna go play handball and I was like all right well just call me when you're done and uh, later that night uh, he was killed um, um, his mom and his sister had called and uh, they had uh, two little gangbangers stole some money and a little thing of weed out of their car <clears throat> and they uh, Uh, hang on a second. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, they decided to, to call Ryan and the dad and say that they'd been robbed by these kids who had took the money to go to McDonald's, I guess, to get some food or something. So, so it course, wasn't too much money? It wasn't too much money. Okay. And it was, wasn't too much weed from what I understand. And... Uh, uh, Ryan and the dad show up, and then this is where the story had changed. Um, one story is um, Ryan got out of the car, and the mom and one of the little gangbanger kids started yelling at each other. And Ryan got in the middle of it and said, just give them their money back so that we can go home. And the kid pulled out a gun and shot him right in the heart and killed him. Mm. Um, the other story from the kids was that Ryan got out of the car and ran over and sucker punched one of the kids. And the other kid got scared for his life because of the size of Ryan and pulled a gun out and shot him. Remember how I told you Ryan knocked that guy out in 11 seconds? Yeah. Broke his nose and his orbital bone? Right. The kid didn't have a mark on his face. So you're telling me if he sucker punched him and that kid didn't even see it coming? Yeah. That there wasn't gonna be a mark on his face? Right. Like, I guess there's about four people that really know what happened up there that night, but we just lost an, an incredible human being. I still miss him all the time. Still go to his grave. Um, still just miss him. So tell me some of your success stories when you've been coaching. Um, I've had quite a few. Um, I can't really tell you probably the most important one. I mean, I have so many of them. Um, you know, we had one of our one of our guys he's a little rough around the edges. Um, literally will fight any human on the planet. I don't know if you know Justin Gregg. Um, he took a last minute fight for uh, um, Reno Academy of Combat. Um, he took a fight downtown for the 155 pound title and, uh, and won. Um, he was supposed to lose. I think they put him in there to lose. And uh, he, he won in, in really dramatic fashion. Uh, you know, that's, that's, a, that's one of them. Um, another one is Joey McKay. Um, Joey's just been amazing to work with. He's, he's so incredibly talented. Uh, he's been training since he was a little kid. Um, he recently left us. He moved to Vegas to go train with Robert Drysdale to try to get into the UFC and, and pursue his dreams. And, and I respect that, you know. Um, Majoy with me was 9-0. Uh, he won two belts. Um, and then I went with him for his pro debut over in Orville, and he ended up winning that. And then after that, he moved to Drysdale, um, his sister Kelly. Um, she's been with me. She's been amazing to work with. She's a lot meaner than Joey, by the way. Joey's sweet. She's not sweet. 
Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. She's a sweetheart. But if you roll not with her in the ring, on the mat, she's yeah, she's a pit bull, man. Yeah, she, is like, a pit bull. she will literally eat your arm off if you leave it out there. <laughs> um, but she's just been really great to work with. Um, we have so many really cool, unique stories in our gym. Like, you know, we have we have cops and felons and doctors and attorneys and former drug addicts and former alcoholics and you know people that and we just work it just works like in the gym there's just so many success stories like that so i see that you've had knee surgery you want to talk a little bit about that yeah um well i've had seven knee surgeries three shoulder surgeries and a broken neck um pretty familiar with surgeries um i don't even really have a crazy story about this one i actually fell out of a truck and caught myself and my knee popped and then I started getting dizzy and nauseous, and I'm yeah. like, oh man, this isn't good. And ended up tearing my ACL and my LCL. Um, so I had surgery, uh, Dr. Pappas did it, who is, in my opinion, the best knee surgeon in town. Thanks, doc. Um, he, uh, they used my hamstring for my ACL and then tried to use a cadaver for my LCL, but ended up using my IT band um, to repair my ACL, or my LCL. Ended up with 39 staples. Mm. Um, yeah, I woke up first thing I did when I woke up is I took the bandage off and I looked at my knee and I'm like oh shit man my kneecap modeling career is over <laughs> um it was it was pretty brutal I've got some I'll send you some pictures on it, it was well you've probably seen them it was pretty it was pretty brutal um six months ago I had surgery I'm um, trying to rehab this trying to get a little bit better every day um Brian Fernley and those guys over at Nevada movie or Nevada physical therapy have just done, been amazing um the last couple weeks i really feel good um and it's easy for me to get on the pity pot you know oh poor me i've had seven surgeries and i'm old and i'm fat and i'm out of shape and i'm trying to trying to use this to motivate myself because i want to compete again i want to want to compete at master worlds and see how i do um with those guys because i think my game um can is at least comparable to those guys i'd like to see where i end up so every time you post a picture of you and your dog my wife is about one foot out the door going over to your house to go get that dog. So tell me about your doggy. <laughs> She'd have to kill me to take that dog. Uh, that's Gracie, my little French bulldog. Um, she was born deaf. Um, my wife, uh, she had a little dog that was everything to her and it had passed away. And it was, it was really traumatic for her. And so she finally got to the place where she wanted to get another dog. So we're like, all right. So we went and looked at these little Frenchies and uh there was a bunch of them and gracie was the only female and uh so she picked her up and uh she was like petting her and playing with her and she's like well grab that one that has the patch over his eye so she sat gracie down and went to grab the other one and gracie started barking at her and jumped back up on her lap and i'm like oh this is the one <laughs> well i was at home with shoulder surgery <laughs> when we got her so gracie had bonded with me she wants absolutely nothing to do with my wife <laughs> so she just gloms onto me and she is just if if you guys know anything about french bulldogs man they are the craziest dog she is just a hoot every day she makes me laugh incredible <laughs> little dog how man. old is she she's gonna be three this year oh she's a baby baby she's a baby baby yeah and batshit crazy i love it she just cracks me up <laughs> man <laughs> hey uh so is there anybody or any uh sponsors you'd like to give a shout out to before we end you know just everybody that supported this team through all these years man um all the coaches that donate their time, all the fighters that donate their time, all the fighters that come in that don't even have a fight coming, that want to spar and make these people better. I mean, it's the, like I said, it's the community that we have that that keeps this thing going. And I just want to thank each and every one of you, man. I, from the bottom of my heart, I'm grateful. Well, you heard it here from Matt Tonkin and the Tonkin Fight Team. You got the history. You got some good stories about a lot of the the, the heartaches and the successes. Thanks for watching, Matt Tonkin. And we'll catch you on the next show. Yeah, yeah.